Zakah on grains and fruits. Allah has subjected the earth for His creation so they are able to acquire different types of produce from it. And He stipulated zakah on everything that is taken from the earth which one attains some benefit from, including grains and fruit when certain conditions are fulfilled. The first classification of this produce is grains and fruits. Allah, the Exalted, says, But pay the due thereof on the day of the harvest. And due to the statement of the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, from that which has been irrigated by the skies, meaning because of rain, and streams, or that which is athari, one-tenth is paid. And as for that, which was irrigated by a nadah, half of one-tenth is paid. Conditions have been laid down for grains and fruit upon which zakah is compulsory. The first being that they should be stored goods. So if they are for daily consumption, no zakah is payable on them. Another condition is that they should be measurable. That is, it should be among the products that are usually weighed in awsuqs. This is drawn from the Prophet's statement, peace and blessings be upon him. There is no zakah on grains or dates until such items weigh up to five osuks. If it is not part of that which is usually weighed in osuks, for example, vegetables and herbs, then zakah is not due on it. Zakah is not compulsory on grains and fruit unless they are grown for the purpose of cultivation and production on agricultural farms. However, zakah is not due on that which is cultivated for only the farmer's personal use. The nisab that makes zakah on the grains and fruit compulsory is five awsuqs. This equals 300 prophetic sa'as. It is also permissible to measure it, so it is equivalent to 612 kgs of good quality wheat. One has to mix variants of the same fruit for the same year, in order to see if they add up to the nisab. It is compulsory to pay zakah on grains when they have hardened and on fruits when they have ripened and therefore deemed consumable. Whoever sells fruits or grains after the period in which the zakah was due is still liable to pay zakah for them as he was in possession of the fruit and grains at the time when they were due. Concerning the amount of compulsory zakah, Due on grains and fruits, the scholar said, the zakah is one-tenth for that which was irrigated with no inconvenience or stress. That is, that which was irrigated by rain and the streams. Whereas, it is half of one-tenth for that which was irrigated through some degree of stress and hardship. That is, that which was irrigated with water from wells. But, if it was irrigated sometimes with rainwater, and at other times with well water, it is compulsory to pay three-fourths of one-tenth from the crops. Evidence for this is in the Prophet's statement, peace and blessings be upon him, from that which was irrigated by water, from the sky, rivers and streams, one-tenth is paid. As for that irrigated by, a sania, half of one-tenth is payable. And if the farm land was rented. The zakah on its produce is compulsory on the one who rented the land, not on the owner of the land. But the owner has to pay zakah on the rent he receives from the land if it reaches the nisab by itself or when it is added to his other capital or trade. And if one lunar year has lapsed on this amount, it is permissible to pay the zakah from the money he owns or from the price of the dates or crops when it is sold. This is according to the needs and any likely gains for the poor at the time. Due to the mercifulness of Islam, the burden of zakah has been removed from those whose grains and fruits have become spoilt, if there was no negligence on their part. If he, however, intentionally damages them or was negligent, he still has to pay the zakah for them. Zakah is not due on honey, as there is nothing reported from the Prophet, peace be upon him, concerning this. But if one paid voluntary alms on it, then this would be a good act. This could even be a reason for his provision to increase and be blessed 
so as to receive much benefit from it.